issues. We'll wait for a minute. Oh, Are we good? We're all good. Great. Hopefully, did they hear all that? No. I didn't hear anything of that. Okay, well, we'll quickly wow. start again. Okay. <laughs> so sorry about the technical problem we just had. Um, we've had a bit of problem with our sound lately mm. and things like that with our, um, our internet. It? Yeah. <laughs> it's been crazy. Um, we'll so start I'll start again. My name's Melanie Newman. And I'm Janelle Austin. <laughs> and Dash the Bichon. And... Thomas, the, I know he's worried about the toy, and this is Thomas, the English Spring and Spaniel, and he is 13 and a half weeks old, so mm. perfect timing to do some puppy training at home yeah. um, for the grooming, because that's, as we are saying, and you didn't hear us, it's yeah. one of the most important times to really spend with your puppy, and so they learn to enjoy the grooming process. Yeah, and I am so passionate about puppies and conditioning puppies to the grooming process and getting them used to that grooming so when they go to the groomers that it's not a surprise and they're not going to have a horrible time at mm, the groomers yeah because they so they feel like it's an enjoyable time it's a yeah, fun time to be there i mean as a groomer i've seen lots of little puppies come in and they've had lots of coat on them but because they've gone through their puppy coat into their adult coat, they're just completely matted and um, it's not the owner's fault or anything like that. It's just that they haven't been told how to brush their dog or they haven't been taught how puppy coat... Um, goes through, when it changes? Yeah, through when you go through coat. coat change, anything like that. So tonight's grooming session, we're going to take you through how to condition your little puppy for um, for grooming mm -hmm. and preparing them for when they go to the salon. So even if you've got a short coated dog, you can still prepare your dog to get their nails trimmed. Yeah. Um, clean their, their ears, ears clean. Yeah. Um, just general tidy ups. Mm -hmm. And it is important because even if you do end up taking your dog to the vet and your dog might have even got a grass seed in their paw or they might mm. have a little cut on their pad or something like that. It's really important that the dogs are used to their little paws being touched and used to that whole experience. Oh. Dash isn't a fan of his little paws being touched. <laughs> he's he, yeah, <laughs> he's not a big fan, but he puts up with it and he knows it's not going to be a bad experience. So we are going to go through some little things that you can do at home that will help get your dog really used to being touched and being groomed and desensitized to it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a fun experience. We want it to be enjoyable, don't we? Yeah, I mean, because as groomers, we actually love that puppies are really, they're so, what, they've just got so much knowledge about the world already. Yeah, yeah. And they're such smart little, little critters that, um, yeah, they really know what's going on. So the more that we can teach them, the, the more that they're going to enjoy that process. Exactly, won't you? Hey? Yes. So I'm going to begin with how, you know, you guys, some of you might already have your puppies or you might be thinking about getting a new puppy. Dash, he's, he's growling, I don't know if you can hear. <laughs> Probably can. He's not very conditioned to having <laughs> a puppy in here. Around, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about choosing a puppy. So it's really important when you decide that you're going to get a dog that you choose a dog that's suited to your lifestyle and how much time you can put aside for grooming. For example, if you're if you've got lots of time to groom your dog and you want a fluffy dog. Um, you might be looking at two to three times a week to brush your dog and every two to eight weeks, depending on how busy you are, to take your dog to the groomer. So just depending on how busy your lifestyle is or you might not want a dog that sheds, which is perfect for a pigeon mm, or, or a poodle. poodle. Yeah, um, blues, all that sort of. Yeah, the... <laughs> really think about the dog that you're choosing and especially with your spaniel type coats mm -hmm. he's having a big drink now he's having a big drink so janelle could go quickly through some spaniel -y type coats yeah so with the i mean i love working on the spaniel coat they're not as 
you don't have to spend as much time with the brushing, but you still want, they grow lots of hair in different areas. So especially their ears, on their legs, mm -hmm. back of their legs. Lots of feathering. Lots of feathering. They might stay quite short if they have a beautiful coat like Thomas. They could stay quite short on their on their back coats um, and won't need as much brushing or combing. But definitely those areas that grow more hair, all the spaniels, um, you know, or setters, um, even your cavaliers mm. as well. Anything that grows that, that long hair, long feathering in areas, um, you definitely want to get the brush through. And But they're not as, you want to, you probably brush them maybe once, twice a week. Yeah, yeah just a quick brush. Just a quick brush, just to go over it. And even if you would like to get, if you like a Bichon, um, but you're thinking, oh, well, I'll just get it clipped short. That puppy still needs to understand that their legs are going to be touched and the clippers are going to go down the dog's legs and the clippers are going to go down the back of the dog and things like that. So it is still really important that we desensitize and really condition our dogs to that process. So even if you are going to get a dog and the dog's going to be clipped short, it's still a really good idea to start brushing your dog quite early and things like that. Thomas is off. <laughs> <laughs> so, most puppies are born with a single coat, so that's what the fine hairs are. So you guys at, at home might have your puppies on your knee right now, that their coat is really fine and as a groomer I think a lot of people they don't understand that that coat is puppy coat and it is going to transition mm. and that coat is going to come out and the adult hair is then going to grow through and that hair will consist of guard hairs and other different types of hair and that is the adult coat. And I find that that transition can take, depending on the breed, yeah. like two, sometimes yeah. three, three years, yeah. um, just depending on that breed. And this happens a lot, and I mean a lot, mm -hmm. that when dogs go through that coat change they can actually change color like they can change that yeah. shade yeah so um lots of cavoodles and that oodly those oodly breeds um they might be a really deep color when they're puppies and then as their adult coat starts to come through you'll see the light a lighter coming come a light color coming through yeah and it you? usually transitions from the back of the dog and then works its way mm. through um up into the the head area so that's usually the last place that that transition takes place and i find that and you would be the same that sometimes dogs get clipped down and it might be mm. like a six month or nine month old dog and it might even get like a a half, half an inch, inch left on or a centimetre left on, that all of a sudden um, the colours change and the owners like... <laughs> they come back in and they're, they're like, like, that's not my dog. <laughs> that's not my dog. My <laughs> clipping made my dog's coat go lighter. No, <laughs> it didn't. It's actually the coat underneath is the adult coat so the adult coat is might be a different color it yeah, might different. even be darker yeah that's true um but it is a different it can be a different color so do not panic when um your dog does get a haircut because it might just be that adult coat coming through um it's nothing that um you guys have you done at home. Process, yeah, you? You I feel cut, like you do. You cut that dark shade off or the, the puppy shade off. Yeah, it brings it through. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so Chanel's got no mic. <laughs> so I'll just lean in. <laughs> we'll lean in. So as um, puppy coat tends to uh, come through, if it's not brushed out, this is what is causing the knots and causing matting and things like that. So this is why it's really, really important that we brush our dogs from an early age. And when we have puppies, we brush them from mm. um, like it's probably ugh, straight away I'm yeah. putting a brush over them oh, no. and things like I that. I think at yeah. like six weeks of age, you know. We're yeah, so it's coat. usually from... From the breeder, they're usually starting that grooming process and it's usually should keep 
continuing when you bring your little, little puppy home. So a few days in, when your puppy's all settled, you can just get out the brush and just gently brush your little puppy. That won't, <laughs> that won't hurt your dog at all. Um, so it is a really good idea when you are brushing your dog that you can actually start to see that new adult coat coming through. Um, I think that's covering. Yeah. We'll go over to the grooming area. And just when you are choosing a, a dog, always talk to your groomers, talk to your breeders. Yeah. Um, head off to some, some, you can go to, there's a lot of groomers that are happy to speak about different dog breeds and talk to them about, you know, what your lifestyle is about. Um, and if that dog, the breeders will definitely know, you know, whether that dog's going to be suitable for you, you know, go and talk to them. They're happy to always talk about their dogs. And, yeah. And, and they have the best advice. So any grooming tips you can get from the breeder is going to be gold and they're really going to help, especially because they've bred that dog. So they've obviously they've got one of the parents or both the parents. So they really know what they're talking about. So it's a really good idea to find out what they're using, what brushes they use and things like that. That's going to be your best friend. Mm -hmm. And if you do, if you can't get in contact with your breeder, definitely go speak to, with your local groomer and I feel like when I had my salon that we would have people coming in all the time with puppies and I loved it. I had little orientation days and they would come in and they would just, yeah. you know, we would just have play with time. the puppy and there is a groomer local to here and she does that. So the puppy comes in, they have a bit of a play and then um, that dog is then ready for the next time it comes in. So it is a really good idea to speak to your groomer straight away. Don't wait till, you know, six, nine months old when your dog's hair is like five yeah. inches long. Yeah. You want Do it straight away. straight away. All right. Should we move to the I grooming so. table? I All think right. we're ready to do some grooming. Dash mine the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> so Thomas is really used to being groomed. He actually Dash wants a whole couch. He just um, Janelle grooms him. How often do you groom him? We, he's been groomed quite often since he was a, a young puppy, but always we do something at least once a week, whether yeah. that's brushing, having a bath. Um, yeah. doing some nails, cleaning the ears. We try not to do everything all at once. Yeah. Um, we do it in little in little sections just so they get used to it. Yeah. A bit slower. Yeah. Yeah. But he's yeah. nearly at the age now that he coats with the whole lot. Yeah. And do Thomas. you pop him on a grooming table? Definitely. Yeah. I so find, yeah, you go. <laughs> and I know I speak about this all the time, but it's really super important that we take our dog to a different area. So if we are in the lounge area that um behind you and going the other way. Oh. If we are in the lounge area, that if we are wanting to brush our dog there, that we move to a mat or something like that, that the dog then knows that he's getting groomed yeah, there. Yeah, familiarises them with that area and they they understand that that's their grooming time and, and they yeah. tend to love it in the end. Yeah, and I use a lot of like yoga mats and things like that because they're non-slip and meaning that they're non-slip on the on the actual surface that they're yeah, sitting on. Yeah, because I've seen like people with towels, <laughs> which is great. It's the dog's not slipping around, but all of a sudden the towels slipped over yeah. <laughs> off the off the bench. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or the washing machine is quite common. <laughs> yeah, yes. I I prefer, and I say to people all the time, don't use a washing machine because mm -hmm. it is on that type yeah. of thing yep. and it, it, it is to the top. it does have a slope and remembering that we really want to make our dog nice and comfortable and um, make them feel really secure so if we don't have a secure surface for our puppies 
that's going to upset our dog straight away. So that's probably my first Mm -hmm. advice that I give people with their puppy is make sure when you groom them that you really have a secure surface. Because if they feel unsteady, that's when they're going to start to get the wobbles yeah yeah it doesn't stop it just keeps wobbling yeah yeah and um they just get the shake so before you take your dog to that area just have everything set so you're really prepared so if you do need somebody else Mm -hmm. to hold um hold your dog make sure you've got somebody else there Mm -hmm. I always say make sure the area, like the room's really quiet, yeah. that there's not other dogs running around um, barking, that um, there's no kids yelling or things like that that's going to cause the dog to get anxiety about what's about to happen, yeah, which they, isn't bad. Yeah, then they want to spend the time on the floor playing with the other dogs rather yeah. than yeah. concentrating <laughs> on what they're doing and, yeah. and enjoying the time with you. Um, yeah so a good idea is just to gently start patting your dog once your dog is comfortable on the surface that you're grooming him on um, it's a good idea just to start patting and this would be the first session don't Mm -hmm. you think that you're just gently getting him used to it and I would normally start with the head but you're already there (laughs) his head sinking more and more into my hand as we're going yeah and it's just nice to just give him a light sort of mass and just gently go through their coat and once they're comfortable with that I tend to just show them the brush because a brush might smell different to them Mm -hmm. or you might have brushed your other dog with the same brush so it's a good idea to let them smell the brush because if you don't I find the dog is like following you around (laughs) they're like what is that that's on my the back of my neck (laughs) yeah 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 so then it's a good idea to show them once they're comfortable with that then you can just gently start to brush their back and if they're still trying to look at that that grooming tool then show them again like just keep them really um let them know exactly what you're doing exactly what you're using some like by patting them you kind of you're starting that motion already and then you introduce the next thing which would be the slicker brush yeah so then it's just a slicker brush and then we can just slowly pick up the paw and then just gently rub their paw and then rub their nail and you can tell he's down. quite used to it. He's quite used to it. And Dash has just moved off camera to watch, so he's yeah. just looking at Dash now. And it's a good idea to go through their tail because if you do have a dog that has a long tail like a Bichon or a Cavoodle, it's a good idea then to just brush through their tail. Ears. Ears. Hey, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And we don't want to go too long with them. So you, you want to start with about two minutes and then work up to like a five-minute groom. Mm. And I would be happy with a five-minute groom for like months. Definitely. Because it's just like such a slow process that yeah. they've really got to get used to. Yeah. And if you do it for five minutes every couple of days even, like it just, you know, it helps. It helps. Even if it's five minutes every three days, it's not – Anything that's going to include you um, grooming your dog, using different tools, is definitely going to help in, in the long run. Yeah. And do we have any questions? Do we have any questions on No that? questions? Not okay, yet. cool. Oh, hello. That's nice. Oh, hello, hello. hello in the <laughs> and then once you're okay with the slicker, I always say to people, just gently run the comb through. Of course, show them first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to hop down with Dash. Yeah. And I That's just use... No dogs in the area. Right? Yeah, yeah, I know. And I break the rule. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a good idea to just use a small comb. So we don't want to use anything big that the dog is going to then go, oh, what is that? Yeah. So just start off small and then just work your way through. And they want to see your face. Through the coat. If you do have any little knots and tangles, it's a good idea to use a conditioning spray and just gently mist that over and then use your slicker just to work that in. Oh, good boy, buddy. Good boy.
and then working through. I also want to go through with you guys lifting up the front legs and going through areas like the armpits. So even if you don't have a lot of coat there to start with, um, they will. And if yeah. your dog wears a harness or anything like that. A jumper. Any a jumper. Clothes. Yeah, clothes. All my dogs are in clothes, so yeah. I'm forever <laughs> brushing. Um, it's a good idea to gently move the arm forward not moving it out on the side so I always like to move the dog's legs mm, in natural, the motion that yeah. they're going to move natural in motion. so the dog's not going to going to move with its arm up here it's going to move forward so getting right underneath the dog and just gently using the brush good boy <laughs> um, and if your dog won't let you do that, just start with something simple like this. Mm. Just lifting the leg, playing with the underarm. Yeah. They actually love it under there. They do. <laughs> they do. And behind the ear as well. So moving the ear forward. I know. Good boy. And then just gently behind the ear because I find that dogs do get a build up around that area. And then if you've got a dog with a muzzle, like little Dash, you just gently want to. <laughs> He's like, oh, what's that? Can you eat that? You don't want to eat that. You don't want to eat that. You can hold. So when you're doing the face, we'll just go back and have a look. You can, uh, like, hold them steady if you wanted to. If you had yeah. a dog with some hair there, yeah, you can hold on to the head just ever so gently. So if you hold him, I'll get Dash. Yeah, that Dash, might be a good idea. come here, buddy. Good boy. So with Dash, and if you do have a dog with a little bit of coat, it's a really good idea. You can have a little handle, and it's just gently, it's just gently here, just underneath their little jaw area. And at the start, your dog's really going to pull because it's a new motion for him but your dog will get used to it and then eventually you won't need to hold there but your dog will just rest their head on your hand so it will be a lot easier to then groom your dog and I find that most groomers do hold this area to trim their eyes and things like that and while we're in that face area, it is a really good idea to really get your dog used to getting their eyes cleaned. Um, <laughs> We've got some questions, so I'll pop him on a lead. Pop him on a lead. Yeah, so <laughs> just getting their eyes um, wiped out around their ears. Dash loves it now. He does, doesn't he? I remember yep. when he didn't love it as oh, much. Oh, <laughs> my God. My poor neighbours. Good boy. Come on, buddy. Is it this? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> I know the code. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got some... How long did it take for Dash to get used to it, do you think, Mel? I think it took him... Well, I remember I went to <laughs> I went to show him at the uh, he would have been I think about seven months. Oh yeah. And I showed him somewhere. Yeah. And he like, he was only half scissored, so it was only the back end that was scissored, <laughs> and the front end was just like this hairy mess. Yeah, really. So it took a long time and a long, long time to get him used to it. And he really hated the sound of scissors around his head. So that's another thing, um, clippers and different noises around your dog's ears. So getting him really used of that, um, that motion is a good idea. Um, I don't know why he didn't like the scissors around his head, but he... It's, some dogs just, it's a noise that they've probably never heard before and they probably only will hear it at the groomers. Um, so I just, yeah, it took me a long time. So I'll find out what other questions we have. Yeah, we're just loading it up now. I'm hoping my mark's not on, so we're just having a look. Is it on? Uh, when would 
you start stripping your puppy and how often? Oh, that's a you question. Mm. That's a you question. A question. I'll come back over. <laughs> We're just trying to work out some technical difficulties. So, so hey, stripping. Stripping. Um, I would start the process fairly early on, probably um, – just so they get used to the feel of it, I wouldn't start pulling any coat until probably about six, seven, eight months of age because um, you want to make sure that that undercoat is starting Coming to through. come through. Yeah. Yeah, and I suppose brushing will help mm. remove that puppy coat as well. Definitely. Yeah. yeah so they're only going to lose the puppy coat to start off with anyways. Um, and but- I suppose all sort of you're talking about Spaniel. That's from Michaela, so she's probably talking more um, terrier, maybe. Yeah, not sure. Um, I'm not sure how do terriers. What do you think for terriers? Are you talking about your little Affen pincer, <laughs> Michaela? <laughs> she came in to see to oh, see really? me today, and she showed me a little photo. Oh my god, it's like 13 weeks old. I'm just saying, I so. I find that when they're babies that you'll know when their adult coat starts to come through that when that stage of hair, once that adult coat's coming through and that stage of hair starts to happen, like that growth stage Mm. starts to happen, you will know from there. So when I would strip a puppy, it would be when that coat is actually ready to come out and and it's at the end of the growth cycle of that particular hair yeah so I feel like every puppy would be kind of different to yeah you'd have to see how they're going um but yeah we want to make sure that you're promoting the coat Coat to to come through yeah and again conditioning them to that process we have got a couple of questions we've just lost a few questions that was asked earlier we might be able to answer them at a different stage Um, but the ones that are being asked now are coming through okay cool um so are there any sprays to use to help reduce dog smell in between baths okay so depending on the particular smell Mm. I like to always find out where where that smell is coming from so um, if my dogs are smelly I always just wash them but if you're talking about a puppy puppy I don't think there's anything wrong with bathing puppies at all Mm -mm. Um, I always bath our puppies from quite a young age and um, trim their face and trim their little private areas and Mm. their little eyes and things like that so um but smells can come from their stomach yeah come from their teeth yeah their ears yeah so that's why it's good to know exactly where Where it's it's coming coming from from. but using um our puppy coat conditioning spray it's rose and that doesn't have a synthetic Mm. fragrance so it is essential oil is perfect to brush your dog in between bars as well and as well as you could use the puppy cologne and you just use a whisper of cologne and then you can also brush that through and because it still has the essential oils in it it is still really really nourishing for the dog's skin and the dog's yeah, even coat though it's just cologne and such <laughs> yeah all right we have got a couple more um are you better to scissor or clip a cavoodle okay I like this question. Well, depending on what the owner wants. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I find, you know, it depends. Exactly, it depends on what you want. It depends on your lifestyle. Um, definitely, how often you can spend grooming the dog. Yeah. Scissoring. There's there's things that groomers can attach to their clippers. Yeah. Snap on combs, which actually just um, attach onto the clipper, that gives a scissor a scissored look, it, and it gives a longer length as well, mm. um, because we all want that that puppy coat yeah. to last forever. We like we want our puppy's we love coat our looking fluffy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I love it. it. Yeah. Sometimes you know it is just um, no getting away with it. Clipping is yeah. fine. You can clip a yeah. dog. It's not going and to. Like I said earlier, it really depends on your lifestyle. So if I'm really busy, I'll scissor dash off quite short, mm-hmm. um, and some of my other dogs. So then it's going to help me in the long run. So clipping them. 
is yeah. totally fine because yeah. you can still do a really cute expression on their eyes, their muzzle, yeah. cute little ears, um, lots of things like that. So, And if you, like, you know, as they get older too, you know, clipping, my dog loves being clipped down Same. I, <laughs> as they get older. They love it. They absolutely love it. And I think, you know, there's no, no harm in clipping nah, the dog. No. Nah. One of my toy, toy poodles loves it. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> so true. Okay. Um, oh, no, was my – so Michaela was asking about a springer. Oh, she <laughs> yeah, was a springer. Okay. Yeah, well, there you the go. The spaniel coat. I definitely, as, um, yes, as I said, about six months of it. As soon as, as Mel explained, as soon as that coat's ready to come, I'm going to start – yeah, pulling it. but starting that process and even using like rubber cones is really great as well. So just putting them through their coat um, with your spaniel type coat, mm. your cavaliers and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Was there any other questions? Got any others? If anyone asked any questions earlier, did, if you wanted to retype them, we can definitely um, ask. It doesn't come up. Oh, what is up. the question? I'll come and find out Hang what on. the question no, is. No, it's all right. Jake can yell out. <laughs> What's the best dryer for a long-haired dog at home? Depending on the breed, um, did they say the breed? No. No, a long-haired dog. No, so depending on the breed, but I always recommend to – my clients to buy little high velocity dryers mm. and they're only small little ones they don't need these big professional ones that i use yeah. um it's just a small one and caboodle. oh caboodle, oh, caboodle. yeah definitely <laughs> a little yep. um high velocity dryer um and i've used it a few times on a few of my youtube videos so if you wanted to pop on our YouTube mm. channel, you'll see me. And I've got a whole video on, on drying. Caboodle. Drying poodle. Uh, it might be on one of my poodles, but it's got okay. a similar coat. So um, you'll be able to see I use a handheld human dryer. I use a stand dryer. And I also use a high-velocity dryer. And I take you through all the different steps on how to use the different dryers. Mm. So definitely pop over to that. What wattage? Oh, oh goodness! Oh my god! <laughs> That's uh, a hard one. Really, I'm like I'm a good dog groomer. I, know, I don't know what wattage it is. <laughs> Do you know? Just Paul? the single motor one, I think, is uh, yeah, two, maybe two forty-five. We're, we're two forty volt. <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, just that you'll see, there's quite a few different types of ones. It's just a small one motor. Yeah. Um, variable speed and variable heat yeah. is a good idea. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll put it. we'll put some links there as well. And I always get my dryers from Oz Grooming World. Mm. I think they have um, a pretty some good variety. Yeah, they do. Oh, we've got some more questions here. Um, hi Mel, can you tell me how to train? I'll oh, come up there because they probably can't hear me. Um, hi Mel, can you tell me how to train my pup to use the groom pillow? Oh, yes. Oh. By the way, this is for Peppa, who you groomed oh, recently. Yeah, yeah. Well, Peppa used a pillow. Just on his, on his own? Yeah, no, she went like a few times I would have to. I don't have my poodle's pillow here, but um, I just gently pop them down and then just place their head on it and I just keep doing it as they sort of try and move and then just keep doing it and then doing it. And mm. then I find now my poodles, they just love it. Like they hop on I the know. table and the other, the other day, day. <laughs> I was grooming my miniature poodle and I didn't have the pillow and he was so restless because he couldn't find where to put his he head. He didn't know where to put it, did yeah, he? Yeah, and as soon as I put his little Chewbacca pillow on, he was like, oh, thank God. That's so much better. Yeah, so it's just continuing that process of just gently popping them down in that drop position and then just popping their head on that pillow so they're nice and comfortable in that 
in that process. Yeah, they quite enjoy it. Like it's quite comfortable for them. So once they get the feel of it, um, yeah, you just come as Mel's doing now. Just pat them as you as you. Yeah, and with Pepper, it was really quite. I just popped her legs just gently, and then the other one, and then she was kind of. Ready on to. the side and then this side, but then eventually like she was smack bang in the middle. And I didn't make her sit there for, for very long. Period time, as yeah. soon as she sat there on her own, I was then good girl, good girl. And then she popped back up. And then that's a positive experience for her instead of me forcing them on that pillow. Mm. But yeah, I hope that helps. But just them. small bits at a time. And I keep saying that just do small grooming practices mm-hmm. at a time and not forceful, just nice, cheerful reward. Yeah, and praise them, um, you know, with have their favourite toys. Yeah, I'm big on toys. I'm not big on treats. Yeah, I'm not a feeder because Bichons love their food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I'm big on... I'm big on treat. Oh, sorry. I'm big on toys, and I'm big on voice command as well. So really happy, high pitch, like good boy, well done, you know. And then giving them a rest. So I always try with babies yeah. to finish them off on a positive experience. Yeah. So not when they're naughty. And I, it is so hard. It was so hard with Dash because he was quite a naughty little boy. He was beautiful, yeah, but naughty. Quite challenging. Yeah, and it was actually really hard to finish off that positive experience. So even if that experience was him on the table, just standing or sitting and just behaving like that's a positive experience and a step forward to him trying to jump off or yeah. trying to bite me or <laughs> <laughs> I remember those days. Those yeah. So I mean and I'm a groomer, so just because we are groomers doesn't mean when we get a new little puppy that they're going to be this amazing dog because they're not. they it it takes dogs, time. It, it does take time yeah. and puppies don't know. So we have to actually teach them that grooming process and little things like we we're talking about earlier with the slicker, touching them, really touching their paws, um, popping our fingers between their little pads can really help with that process. And this is Dash saying that he doesn't like something because he goes on his side like this. And that's okay that he doesn't like it, but he's really putting up with it. And I just put a little bit of pressure on those pads and he's totally fine. That's a good boy. But was there any other questions? I don't think I've got any other it worked. Thanks, Mel. Oh, someone must be grooming at the oh, same time. <laughs> that's beautiful. We should have a groomathon. It was Stacey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dash and so uh, I think we could probably finish up now. So if you guys have um, any questions, please email us, shoot us a message, or oh, there's one question. Oh, we're getting <laughs> Sorry to have a this, but what age should we start sending them to a groomer? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I think so most groomers will take their um, clients from 10 days after their the, C5 vaccine. Their last so one. Their last one. Some um, will get it on their second one. Some have a third one. Um, but as long as it's a C5, yeah. 10 days after, that's where you want to – that's what you want to – um, aim for and as soon as you can get them there we usually recommend to do a bit of a tidy before the full groom even if it's just a bath we used to do um we used to do bathing um we used to do yeah. bathing first or even if the owner just wanted to come in for their puppy to have a visit yeah and a walk through and the owner would actually walk through the salon with their puppy just so i think that really taught the dog that the owner's there and it's not a bad thing that's right yeah um so definitely like i was saying earlier even before you get your dog, um, speak with your groomer. Go in there and say, hey, I'm getting a new little Bichon. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, is that another one? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, and then we usually say, like, start it off slow. Don't go there at eight months of age and, and want their haircut because sometimes that makes it quite a un- – unpleasantable experience experience for them because it's clippers it's 
their legs getting touched for the first time in a different way, um, all different noises, different smells. And so <laughs> it can be quite a, an unpleasant experience. Another question. Um, and how do you manage large dogs on a table? So this table actually goes up and down. Down and up. Down and up. <laughs> <laughs> so most groomers do have um, hydraulic, hydraulic or electric, electric tables, tables, so that's no problem for a groomer. But if you do have a large breed at home and you either want to put it on a table or I always recommend that people, it's a two-person job. Mm. If you've got like a Labrador, oh, mm -hmm. my God, a new family. I know, my goodness. Um, <laughs> that it is a two-person job to help lift the dog onto the table. And on our first live, we had Shelby the lab mm -hmm. and we went through popping the table right down and just putting one paw on at a time instead of just popping your dog on and going, Lifting yep. them up, hoisting them up. Just pop one leg on one at a time pour on at a time and then just see how they feel and if the dog's okay with one paw the first day then that's a reward to then go good boy and then that's enough type thing mm -hmm. but another idea yeah, is to the yeah pop them on the floor get a yoga mat and um, pop them on the floor and groom them on the Ooh, on the course. same yeah. mat every every time you groom them so they're getting used to it and what can happen is if you've got that mat on the floor and then you want to groom them on the table yeah you put that mat on mm. the table and the, they, it's no. communicating that that mat is a grooming um area so that can also be a really great idea we've just had a good a good comment um just in regards to the sounds of the clippers so someone said, um, I know it sounds silly, but putting clipper sound effects on your phone and... Sorry. Yeah. If you can't hear me. <laughs> you have to lift it up. We'll get, the, we'll get these microphones sorted. Maybe we can go like this. How's yeah. that? That mm -hmm. might be easier. I know this is silly, but putting clipper sound... Effects on your phone, phone and yeah. touching your puppy with I the, think there's yeah. an app there that does app. that. Yeah. Um, yes, but it's definitely a good idea, like electric toothbrush as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that little bit of vibration around the dog's neck area and you can work it just on the back and then going up behind the ear. Down um, their legs as well. Down their front feel... legs. That's the most – we find a lot of the time the front legs is usually the thing that they don't love – having done as much. Yeah. So work on the whole body first and then do your front legs last. Run your clippers yeah. or run your sound or your vibration yeah. over the legs last. Yeah. Perfect. So there was no other questions? No? Great. So, okay, so we'll finish up because little Thomas is dying to <laughs> – get on the floor and just run like, around come on let's just go for a play so now. definitely if you guys have any other questions um definitely reach out to us via email or via our youtube channel or our facebook channel as well yeah. and or if you've got any requests of any videos you would like us to do yeah we've had some good requests coming through so yep. keep those requests coming through that'd be great yep and next week we have the amazing oh, yeah. helen schaefer we do from the USA, mm -hmm. um, and I'm really excited for her to be coming over. I know. Same. So what's she going to be doing? Well, she's going to be working on Rocky, the American Cocker, just with a pet trim, just doing a pet trim on um, Rocky. Some of you may remember Rocky from yeah. the grooming competition days. Um, he's now definitely in a pet trim. Yeah, um, and, so we'll go yeah. through clipping their ears, clipping their little face, their neck area, mm. and probably their little paws. Yeah, paws. Yeah. He's got some hairy paws. Yeah, <laughs> okay. He's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Janelle's mum loves him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and until next time, happy grooming, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Bye, guys. guys. See ya.